Hi, today I'm going to talk you through an American war action film called Wind Talkers. Watch out, there are spoilers ahead. In 1943, Solomon Island witnessed a gruesome battle between the US Marines and the Japanese Army. Corporal Joseph Enders, aka Joe, is the sole survivor after his entire team is killed in the war. He suffers from a perforated eardrum and is admitted to the Kaneohe Bay US Naval Hospital. He's traumatized by the memories of the wartime. Rita, his nurse, helps him to pass the hearing test and return to active duty. Ben Yahtzee and Charlie Whitehorse are friends from the Navajo tribe. They are joining the US Marine Army and are trained to send and receive coded messages. They are taught that speed and accuracy under pressure are very essential to get their transmission to the command post. Ender is called to the Major's office and is being briefed about the mission. The Japanese have pretty much cracked every code that the Marines have used. Men killed on Solomons are also due to the broken code. The Corps has developed a new code based on the language of the Navajo, a Native American tribe. So the Navy has decided to go to great lengths to protect it. Ender's job is to keep the Navajo coder, the one he's paired with, safe from falling into the hands of the enemy. He is dumbfounded for being assigned the task of personal watchdog for some Navajo man. He believes that he serves the Corps best as killing Japanese in war rather than the ridiculous task he's offered at the moment. The Major shows his photographs of Navajo being tortured to death by the Japanese side trying to bust the code. The man was just a Navajo, but not a code talker, so even if he wanted, he could not be of any help. It's still the code, not just the language. Under no circumstances can he allow his code talker to fall into the enemy's hands. His confidential mission is to protect the code at all costs. He is then promoted to sergeant. Pete Henderson, aka Ox, is one to come out of the Major's office before Enders enters it. In the army camp, Henderson recognizes Joe and goes to strike up a conversation. He asks if he's with Jasko as well. They observe the two Navajo men getting lost in the camp from afar. Henderson decides to go and introduce himself, but Joe warns him not to get too friendly with them. The Navajos introduce themselves as Charlie Whitehorse and Ben Yahtzee. During lunch, Yahtzee comes up to Enders and introduces himself as his paired partner. He's not welcomed by Enders. Yahtzee accidentally knocks over Enders' drink and offers him his drink, but unfortunately, he spills his drinks all over Enders' lunch. Enders and Henderson are playing cards with their fellow Marines. As a couple of seats are vacant, Henderson calls Whitehorse and Yahtzee to join in. One of the guys comments about the engine poker with ill intention. Yahtzee joins the game while Whitehorse plays a beautiful melody with his instrument. Orders finally come through that they will ship out tomorrow morning. The destination is the island of the Saipan. Saipan is the Japanese island protected by the Japanese, so capturing the Saipan island will be the key stepping stone towards subjugating Tokyo. All of the Marines are hyped up. They're going to be the frontliners in the mission. They have the duty of figuring out the enemy's position and coordinating the naval gunfire. Lastly, Whitehorse and Yahtzee are introduced as the radio men and Enders and Henderson as sergeants responsible for backing up the said Navajo radio men. Meanwhile, Joe is having flashbacks of the Solomon Island War. He makes his way past the crowd and throws up. Yahtzee follows behind him and offers some medicines for nausea. Enders asks Yahtzee what he's doing in the war. Yahtzee replies that he's being a code talker. He's here to fight for his country and his people. The Marines are proudly singing the Marines hymn and celebrating before shipping out. Rita hands out a bottle of pain reliever in case his ears start to ache and asks him to buy her a drink. On the island of Saipan in 1944, the war between the Japanese and the US Marine Corps is taking place. The war zone is filled with gunfire, air fire, grenade explosions, and the firing of field artillery. Japanese are charging toward them. Enders tells Yahtzee to stay behind him. Once again, Enders remembers the Solomon War and the face of his dying friend. He makes Yahtzee relay on the coordinate locations of the targets for naval artillery to bombard. The Japanese are tracking the radio signal being transmitted, but since it's in coded language, they cannot understand a single thing being said. The US Corps charges further. At one point, Yahtzee has pointed a gun at the face of his enemy, but he freezes up on the spot and is unable to pull the trigger. Enders comes to his rescue and slices up the neck of the enemy from behind. At night, they're taking shelter in the forest, talking about their life back home and the possibility to make it out alive. Whitehorse puts ash on Yahtzee, performing some kind of ritual. Enders is watching them and Henderson, who has come to deliver mail, joins them. 
In the morning, Chick picks a fight with Yahtzee with racial comments and hits him. He provokes Yahtzee to fist fight with him. Enders arrives at the scene but chooses to do nothing and watch the guys fighting. Papas intervenes to stop the fight, only then does Enders step in to chokehold Chick. Yahtzee briefs Enders about last night's ceremony being a protection ceremony. Their tribe believed that until the body is given a proper burial, the spirit stays near it. He tells him that he will not freeze again in the war zone. White Horse is playing his instrument and Henderson comes around to talk. They discover they have a common interest in music. Moments later, they start to play their instrument harmoniously. While being transported, Yahtzee is writing a letter to his son, George Washington Yahtzee. But Ender shouts at him for forgetting his orders of no letters out. They are ambushed on their way. The vehicles and marines are all in tatter. They discover that they are being attacked by their own guys as they are on the wrong road. Yahtzee is asked to notify the regiment on the horn of the situation. But since the radio has been hit, there's no way to contact the people on the other side. The Japanese are catching up on them fast. Nelly sacrifices his life trying to protect his fellow brother. Looking at the unfolding situation, Yahtzee puts forward his plan of infiltrating the Japanese, getting a hold of one of their radios to connect to the regiment. Enders opposes the idea, but since they are in this helpless situation, he follows along and helps Yahtzee to dress up as the Japanese army. Yahtzee takes Enders as a hostage and reaches the Japanese side. Enders let himself be hit by the enemies, and upon finding an opportunity, he takes the hidden revolver gun from under Yahtzee's clothes and starts to fire at the enemies. Getting their hands on the Japanese radio, they convey messages to cease fire toward them and redirect the fire in their enemy's direction. The battle comes to a halt. They give their dead brothers a decent burial. Colonel comes to find Enders to present him with a Silver Star badge as commendation for his bravery in the battle zone. Enders points out that the mission could not have been a success if not for the private Ben Yahtzee. The Colonel calls Yahtzee an Indian, to which Enders corrects him. Enders hands over the commendation badge to be sent to Nelly's wife. At night, while they're drinking sake, Yahtzee praises him for giving his Silver Star to Nelly's wife. Enders jokes about how he threw his first Silver Star into the ocean. He shares his story of receiving his first Silver Star for being the only survivor of the Solomon War. But he's deeply guilty for holding all the 15 men in the Swamp Marsh of nowhere and causing them to be killed. Yahtzee asks him about those men and that it might be good to tell a story about them to honor them. Enders is haunted by the memories of the Solomon War. Yahtzee helps Enders to his bed. He takes Ender's cigarette, smokes it, and blows the smoke over Ender's body. With the cigarette ash, he performs the protection ceremony for Ender's. On the way to the village of Tanapang, they are talking about the things that they are planning to do after the war is over. They have secured the village area and set it up for the defense position. Ender's checks upon one of the family and finds out that the little boy is hurt. He gives the boy his bottle of pain reliever. Ender's and Yahtzee find out that both of them were brought up in a Catholic household. Yahtzee invites Enders to visit Navajo country after the war is over and do stuff and meet his son. Yahtzee is then called to code the message back to the command post. Enders requests with battalion commander to quit his duty. But Gunny has a discussion about the matter with him. Suddenly, they are attacked by the Japanese. Harrigan is killed in the process. White Horse saves Chick from the sneak attack of the enemy. Henderson's head is served while saving White Horse. White Horse fights with all his ability but gets caught by the Japanese. Enders sees White Horse being dragged by the Japanese, but he is hesitant to kill him. But to protect the code at all costs, he threw a grenade and blew White Horse along with the Japanese. Once the battle is settled down, Yahtzee comes and asks for Henderson and White Horse. Enders points toward the dead body, indicating they're dead. Yahtzee breaks down into tears and asks what happened. Enders replies that he had to kill him. Yahtzee points the gun at the face of Enders but cannot pull the trigger. Yahtzee remembers how he talked to White Horse to come on this mission despite him not wanting to. Gunny informs Enders and his team that they're going to check over the last defensible ridge on the island. He warns Enders to follow the orders strictly without adding his own thoughts. Throughout their journey, Yahtzee is angry at all that has happened. They make their way to the ridge. Soon enough, they find themselves in the middle of a minefield. Moments later, they are suddenly surrounded and attacked by the enemies. As they move further down to check the area, Gunny is shot in the chest. Yahtzee moves on his own and Enders follows behind him. Yahtzee is bloodshot with anger and attacks the enemies crazily. Gunny is gone and they're running out of ammunition. They start doubting their chances of getting out alive from this messy situation. 
Enders finds himself facing a similar situation as in the past, but this time he's determined to make it out of there alive with everyone. Japanese are firing artillery toward the US troops. They need to call in the flyboys, but lacked radio. Enders risks his life to get the radio, but Japanese get their hands on the radio first. Enders finally gets a hold of the radio and saves Yahtzee from the explosion, but they both end up getting shot in their limbs. Fortunately, Yahtzee gets connected and asks for air support. Yahtzee is shot in both of his legs and they find themselves surrounded by the enemies. He asks Enders to kill him, but Enders is determined to get out of the situation without anyone dying. Enders carries Yahtzee on his back, but is again attacked with a flying grenade. He still does not give up and drags Yahtzee to safety. However, in the process, Enders suffers a fatal injury, endangering his life. In his last moment, he clears out to Yahtzee that he did not want to kill Whitehorse and prays prayer along with him. He breathes his last breath in the war zone. After the war, Yahtzee returns back to his family in the Navajo land. He, along with his wife and son, are remembering Joe Enders and are praying for his departed soul. The end. Thanks for watching. If you fancy more, check out this video now and do not forget to subscribe. Peace.